Today we're going to evaluate a nice infinite series that comes from the problem page of the Harvard MIT Math Trust. So in particular, what we want to do is calculate the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the inverse cotangent of n squared plus n plus 1. We're going to use two main tools to do that, which we will derive just for completeness here. The first is a relationship between the inverse cotangent and the inverse tangent. And the second one is a difference formula for the inverse tangent. Okay, so let's do this first one first. So let's maybe go ahead and suppose that theta equals the inverse cotangent, so cotangent inverse of x. But now using the function inverse function relationship, that means the cotangent of theta is equal to x. But then by the definition of the cotangent as 1 over the tangent, that tells us that the tangent of theta is 1 over x, which applying the inverse function tells us that theta is equal to the arctan of 1 over x. But now gluing these two equations together at the theta gives us our result. Okay, so now let's move on to the second one, which like I said is a sum formula, or in our case, a difference formula for the inverse tangent function. So we have arctan of x minus arctan of y is the arctan of x minus y over one plus xy. And here we're going to start with a sum angle formula for tangent. That's just because we have to start somewhere. So let's use the following sum, or I should say difference angle formula, that the tangent of alpha minus beta is equal to the tangent of alpha minus the tangent of beta over 1 plus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. And now it's a matter of rewriting this angle difference formula for tangent in terms of the inverse function. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. We'll introduce some notation. So let's set x equal to the tangent of alpha. So that means that alpha is equal to the arctan of x. And then furthermore, we'll have y is equal to the tangent of beta. That tells us that beta is equal to the arctan or the inverse tangent of y. And then from there, we'll take our identity up here and we'll apply the inverse tangent to both sides. And as we apply the inverse tangent to both sides, we'll make the following substitutions. So applying the inverse tangent to the left-hand side will leave us with alpha minus beta because of the function inverse function relationship. But alpha is arctan of x and beta is arctan of y, so that leaves us with arctan of x minus arctan of y. And then we can apply the inverse tangent to the right-hand side as well while we make the following substitutions for tangent of alpha and tangent of beta. So this will give us the arctan of x minus y over 1 plus xy. And that's, of course, because x is tan alpha and y is tan beta into this expression up here. Okay. Okay, so now that we've derived these two tools, it's just a matter of putting them together in order to find the closed form for this sum. So we'll start with this first tool. So we can express this as a sum of the inverse tangent instead of the inverse cotangent. So here we'll have this as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the arctan of 1 over n squared plus n plus 1. Great. But now we'd like to write this arctan of 1 over n squared plus n plus 1 like the right-hand side of this expression right here. And if we can do that carefully, then perhaps we'll have something like a telescoping series. So looking at this, we have a 1 plus something in the denominator already. We have 1 plus n squared plus n. Then we can write n squared plus n as a product of n times n plus 1. So that motivates us to take this denominator and re-envision it as 1 plus n times n plus 1. So that tells us that maybe 
in our setup, we have x equal to n plus one or y equal to n or vice versa, but I think this will be the correct choice. But if x equals n and y equals n plus one, notice that means our denominator, so let's write that down. Our denominator is most definitely one plus xy, so that's good. And then notice our numerator is most definitely x minus y. And that's because n plus one minus n is just one. So let's take this numerator and write it as n plus one minus one. And now we can apply this difference condition kind of in the reverse direction with our new setup. So that's gonna give us the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the arctan of x, but that's n plus one in this case, minus the arctan of y, but that's gonna be the arctan of n. So we have something like that. But now in order to do this like super carefully, we probably want to set this up as a limit of partial sums. So this is going to be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as N goes from zero to capital N of the arctan of N plus one minus the sum as little N goes from zero to capital N of the arctan of N. So I've split it up into two sums, which is something that's allowed once we've gotten it as a finite sum. And now we'll re-index this first one into this second one. So we can do that by replacing n with n minus one. So let's see, that's gonna change this n plus one to an n, and that means we're going to start at n equals one, and we're gonna end at, at little n equals n plus one. So that means we'll have the limit as capital N goes to an infinity. I'll take the top term out. So that'll be the arctan of capital N plus one. And then we'll be left with the sum as N goes from one up to capital N of the arctan of little n. So just to reiterate, this is what happened after we re-indexed this first sum and pulled the top term out of this first sum. Now, we don't need to re-index the second sum, but we do need to pull out the bottom term because notice we've created something that goes from one to capital N, whereas this goes from zero to capital N. So we'll pull out the zeroth term, which is the arctan of zero. So that's attached to a minus sign. So we have minus arctan of zero, and then we'll have minus the sum as little n goes from one up to capital N of arctan of N. And just to reiterate, that's what we've gotten from expanding this. Well, really, we just pulled out that first term. But now we've got an obvious cancellation. This sum right here, this sum right here are exactly the same, but with opposite signs. And then the arctan of zero is equal to zero, and that's because the tangent of zero is equal to zero. And we're left with the limit as n goes to infinity of the arctan of n plus one but the horizontal asymptote to the right for the inverse tangent function is well known to be pi over two. So that gives us our final value of pi over two. So I've done other problems on the channel where we calculate certain nice infinite sums. So there should be one on the screen right now if you wanna check it out. And that's a good place to stop.